In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how you can take hollow text characters and fill them in in a dramatic way. I saw this on television and I thought, we can do this in PowerDirector. Let me show you an example and then I'll show you how to do this yourself. What I have on the screen is my video clip on track number one. Now we're going to do a special title. So I'm going to click on my title room. And once I'm in there, I'll take the default my title and drag it to track number two. I'm going to, with it highlighted, click on the clock above the timelines and change the default using the keyboard simply to seven seconds. Now what I want to do is edit the title. I'll double click on it. That will get me into my title designer. I'll do control A to select them all. And I would just call this Canyon. I'm going to select it again and I want to change the font family to impact. And let's change the size. Let's make it a 72. And I'll move it down toward the bottom. So here is my text. Now I'm going to change it so all we see is an outline. To do that, I'm going to actually turn the font face off. I'll uncheck that. And then I go to border and my default color is red. I don't want it red. Let's keep it white. And I think it's a little too fat, too wide for me for a border. So I'll make it a little smaller, something close to one and a half. That looks pretty good. And I'll click on OK. So now I have my title. How do I fill it in? Well, we're going to take this clip of the title and I'll right click on it. I'll do copy or I can do control C. Move to the following track and do control V to paste. Now we're going to change it on track number three. So I double click to get back into my title designer. And in this case, I'm going to turn my font face on. But I don't want my font face white. I'm going to make this a gradient color. I'll click on gradient color under fill type. I'll click on the black stop. Click on a color. Let's take something in the blue range, a nice dark blue. Click on OK. And let's see. Let's see. I don't want it quite so white at the top. So I'm going to click underneath here and add another stop. And we'll edit the stop by double clicking on it. And we'll make it more dark like the original. You just have a little bit of an edge at the top. Click on OK. That's not too bad. So now we have Canyon that will turn blue. I'll click on OK. Now, of course, all we see is track three. It overlays track two. If I want to turn it off. I see what I have on track two. I'll turn it on. There's my track three. Now, how do I make it move? I do that with a mask. So I'm going to click on track three. Under the Tools button, I choose Mask Designer. Now I'm in my mask designer window. What I want to do is select a mask and I want to make sure the mask covers the screen. But I'm going to use the minimize magnifier at the top first of all to make it smaller and I want to make sure my mask is big enough to cover the screen and I'm going to angle it somewhere close to 45 degrees. And I want to make sure it's wide enough because I'm going to keyframe it. When I'm done with it, it needs to fill the screen. Okay, like this. So what I want to do, I would make sure I'm at the very end of it, the front end with my playhead, and I will take the mask and move it here. And I will set a keyframe. Then what I will do is I will move into the project. Let's say we want to go in four seconds press enter there's my time frame and I'll simply drag this you know what see what it did to the letters and have it stop there at four seconds so now I need to do some writing down let me show you why I'm going to move to the first keyframe here by clicking on the the left triangle I'm at the first keyframe you notice there's a mark position it says the X value is minus 452 and the Y is minus 8. I also have another value 
which is my rotation value, which is minus 45. Now when I'm done, I'm into the project, 4 seconds. Now my x value is 0.5. My y value is 0.424. OK, and my rotation hasn't changed. I'll click on OK. Now if I play this, we're going to see it will fill in the letters. That's good. But what I saw on TV was more than filling in the letters. There was also a little bit of a shade coming with this. Now, I can't put that on the same track. I need a different track. So what I'm going to do is go back to my resources. And I'm going to click the side button to open up color boards. Now I'm going to choose a gradient color board. Now here are a series of gradient color boards. Let's take any one of them. We're going to change it anyway. Drag it down to track 4. Now we're going to click on Change Color. We're going to start out, in this case, with a different kind of color for the first one. I'm going to pick a kind of a light, light blue. And then the click on OK. And then the end color will be probably something in the same range, even lighter. Click on OK. OK, it's just very faint. So this is my color gradient that we're using. I'm going to click on OK. Once I have the gradient, the next step is to change the time. I want to make it a 7 second gradient for duration. Now it matches. Now I need to add a mask that's identical to the other mask. Unfortunately, I cannot copy it. But let's see what we can do. I click on it and choose the tools above the timelines and choose my mask designer. Again, I'm going to minimize it a little bit and we'll add a mask to it. We'll take this rectangular mask and I want to make sure it's big enough. It can be too large. It can't be too small. We'll rotate it and we'll start off the screen. Now, I need it to be at the same location as the other mask. So with the mask highlighted, I want to change the mask position. It was a minus 452 before on the X value. So I drag over and type 452. And the Y before was minus 0.8. So I'll drag over there and just type an 8. The rotation has to be the same. Oh, it's 45 degrees. I did match it. So now I'm going to set my position keyframe for my mask. Now I move over into my project, 4 seconds, press Enter. That will move my time code. And then I'm going to look at the values I had before. At this place, I'll set a keyframe using the diamond. And it's a plus 0.5, 0 0.5. And the Y value is 0.424. OK, now I see I don't have it big enough. That's OK. All I need to do is change the size, and that covers it. Click on OK. Now what will happen is the gradient will slide across the same way. We've got one more change to make, but let's see what we've got so far. I'm going to play this from the beginning. All right, now all we have to do is change the opacity on the gradient. I'll double click on the gradient. And we're going to look at the opacity value. I just want a, a tinge of color on it, just enough to show it's different. Uh, maybe that's good. Click on OK. Now we go back to the beginning. And we'll play it. And now it perfectly matches the movement right on top of the letters. So the gradient and the letters are moving at the same time. The masks are matched. And we're going from hollow letters to a two-color gradient in the character of the letters in my title.